name is Evan Weiss from the band Intuit Over It, and I'm here with Chris Simpson from Mineral. Um, and this is an interview for Alternative Press. Uh, Chris, how are you today? Uh, fantastic today. How has the tour been going so far, in your opinion? Because I don't think we've really gotten to talk about it yet. We've been out for about a week, and, uh, and I don't know if I've gauged how you've, what kind of time you've been having after maybe having not done this in uh, t how many years? At least like 17 or something. Okay, great. So how do you feel so far about it? Uh, great. It's an amazing opportunity to play for people. We didn't really get to play for people in the past. Large groups of people <laughs> like we have been on this tour. Uh, <laughs> it's been really fun, like playing nice clubs where you can hear yourself and have monitors and fancy things like that. If you, okay, did, had Mineral, we're in Cleveland right now. Had Mineral played in Cleveland actively when you guys were a band? Yeah, we played, uh, and we played all over. We played the Odeon. Once, I've been for this band called The Innocent Mission, randomly, the first time we were in town. Okay. Which is like a big theater type place. Uh, what's that? Okay, well, gone. The Odeon is uh, no more. The Odeon is gone. <laughs> but we started at the Odeon, and then we played at Speaking Tongues a few times, which okay. was a cool little DIY place back in the day. Also gone. Uh, and then probably the last couple times we played at Euclid Tavern. Recently, oh, Recently yeah. So There you go. One of three remains. One of three remains. <laughs> yeah. Is it kind of a culture shock to have played these cities... You know, maybe to, to still sizable crowds, but uh, to play to maybe two, three, four times as many people now in 2014. For sure, yeah. Uh, especially like Boston and Philly and places, D.C., places like that. We didn't used to play to that many people at all. I've spoke openly before about my uh, love for your band. And considering the way the band ended and kind of the mystery surrounding it, there were a lot of questions that I'd had uh, involving the band that went kind of unanswered. Um, one of them being why the band broke up uh, and why uh, why you guys decided to part ways before it seemed like stuff was really going to start getting moving. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think we were just young. and I know myself and Jeremy uh, kind of individually came to the conclusion that we wanted to quit the band um, for our own reasons, but then we talked about it collectively and talked to the other two dudes. And it was kind of sad because, you know, they definitely wanted to keep going. Uh, obviously, we had labels and people involved who really wanted it to keep going. But uh, um, in retrospect, I don't know if it was just being young and thinking. I don't know what it was. But I, uh, I just wanted a break. You know, like I wanted to do something totally different, like creatively and musically. And, and personally, like I wanted to like hang out at home all the time and like establish a relationship. And, things like that that <clears throat> I hadn't really done throughout the mineral years um, and musically we wanted to do something a little different um, but I think we were young in the sense that we didn't understand necessarily like how special the success and connection mineral was having was at the time maybe thought we can just take a little break and go do something else and we'll pick up right where we left off you know I know personally for me I didn't hear uh, and Serenading was the first record that I heard, and I didn't hear that record until maybe 1999. Okay. Um, and it was funny, the friend who showed me that record for the first time was at your DC show. We okay. got to hang out and we were catching up, talking about, you know, what it was like to just drive around and be in high school and listen to that record and yeah, yeah. how much of a connection that had on me. Have you found it interesting seeing how many uh, people who never got a chance to see the band coming to see it, and what has their response been? Um, being like first timers, seeing a band that they've probably waited, you know, 15 years to see. Yeah, I mean, I think those, there's a lot of those people. It seems like, uh, and that's awesome. Like, that's what's so fun about doing this. Like, getting to play for people who discovered the band posthumously, uh, and getting to uh, give them a live experience of the songs from these records that they established this relationship with. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to play for people who've never seen it before. And I think the people who have seen it before. Yeah, yeah, that's but, another question. What do the people who, yeah. <laughs> what do people who saw it the first time think of it this time? Well, I know before we left town, we played in Austin, and all our friends were there, and like people who saw us back in the day, and they all said, you know, it's cool to see you in a venue where like there's a good sound system and we can hear things. You know, uh, maybe we're playing better than we did back then. I don't know. I mean, some <laughs> of that. Some of that YouTube footage, like, we were not known for our professionalism by any means. Like, there's like eight minutes between each song for tuning without, like, hitting pedals to mute it. And it was just, you know, backs to the crowd the whole time. We were, yeah. we were, not, uh, we were not performing for anyone. You guys also came along at a kind of a weird time where there wasn't a lot of 
record keeping, at least audio and visual record keeping, to be able to know what it sounded like back then if you weren't there to see it. Yeah, and it seemed sure. like you guys broke up right before that became a thing where people could bring like a video recorder to a show and be able to film yeah. what a set was like and have this kind of uh, lasting impression of what a band could be. Yeah. Um, so that made it even more mysterious for people like me who got into the band, you know, posthumously and and kind of built up this idea in my head about what it could have been or what it was or where the what the tones were like, what gear you were using, you know, stuff like that. So um, it's super cool to get to see it now and and see it kind of come full circle and and uh, and especially see it on such an intimate level, the way that we're like fortunate enough to see it, where we can yeah. see it every day and we can talk to you about it personally. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? 